the world as we know it will change. Good morning, my friends. It is I, John, here on a very, very, very cold day. It's 16 degrees outside. Snow's blowing. And uh, it's just one of those days where I'm in the studio. I'm having apple cider and enjoying that. Uh, I wanted to make this video because, like most of you, I have YouTube channels that I follow. And now that we're in the beginning of January here, where I'm getting all these YouTube videos coming across my feed of how the world is going to change in 2024 and the world is changing as we know it and 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 you know in the near future everything is going to be different even one one very famous medium is talking about how the wars are going to change our world and and focusing on the negative aspect of these wars and all this stuff the world as we know it will change. This is what I call lazy prophecy. Why do I call it lazy prophecy? Because the world changes minute by minute. The world will always be changing. You know, 5,000 years ago, they used to sacrifice children to God. Then it came to the point where they said, oh, that's terrible, we shouldn't sacrifice children, right? Even in my lifetime, you know, we used to not eat meat on Fridays, right? And now it's like, oh, okay, it's changed. Everything's changing, right? In the in the fifties, homosexuality was something you hid, and you were afraid of society. Nowadays, it's much more open because society and the world has changed. You know, religion is is suffering right now, not because of. Uh, persecution of the religious, it's because the world has changed and the religions didn't. The religions have been stuck in this thousands of year old patterns that make no sense in the modern world that has already changed. Our world is changing by the minute, by the cho every choice we make. And what the, what the world will be tomorrow will be what, what we believe today. And when the more of us come to a place of, of choosing that loving world, that loving world comes into experience. Well, what happens when it comes into that loving world? The people who are uh, stuck in those ancient religions and those ancient patterns and that old way of thinking, you know, the make the make you know, the um, let, wanting to go back to the way it was in the fifties, right? That's because they're stuck in the old patterns, whereas we're shifting into a new pattern. Those people will start to yell and call names and, and um, as Socrates said, or is at least attributed to, you know, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. So it comes down to they're slandering because they're still stuck in that old pattern and it has to be right. One of the issues that I have on a, on a fairly regular basis are the Christians telling me that I'm the Antichrist and all this stuff, but they don't realize the world is shifting, the world is changing. 54% of the Christian congregations have left over the past 20 years because the world is, is changing every day. What these videos on YouTube are doing is they're, they're marketing or processing off of that. It's, it's early in January. Of course, predictions for the new year are, are a big thing. You know, when they look at, you know, the world is, is changing, the world will change this year and all these things, the world changes every year. The world grows and, and, and morphs into something else in every moment. And, you know, when atrocities happen in the world, nowadays, in, in the old days, people wouldn't have actually put, given it as much thought. They would have thought of it in very black and white thinking, atrocities in the world. But now you look at people thinking about the atrocities in the world, and they're seeing all sides, all perspectives, because the world has changed. We have already changed the world. People are starting to look at the world. And, and quite honestly, I hear... Every day, the villainization of the, of the Internet. The Internet is just a process of thought from all over the world, and it can be used just like the, your regular thoughts and your conversation in your community. But the interesting thing about the Internet is the Internet has, has let us see people from all over the world. I talk to people from everywhere, and you know what I find? I find loving people everywhere. And I find 
the internet has has opened up their minds to other possibilities. It has opened up their minds to seeing people from other parts of the world. It's just like them. You know, the world is changing on a regular basis. The world is changing in every moment of every day. But the videos of prophetic, masterful changes or, or, or giant changes or you know, events that are going to happen because of prophecy, that's, that's just lazy. That's just lazy prophecy. The world is changing always. They can say, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. What are they doing? They're giving a belief. They're delivering a belief. And that belief itself is creative if we take the belief. But what's happening is, because of so much information being delivered, our beliefs are being altered. Our beliefs are being changed. There's a certain percentage who will go down that rabbit hole and see nothing but negative. The majority of people on the internet are seeing the positive. But when you focus on what the negative are doing, then you're just going down the negative with them. You're being drawn into their experience. The world will change as we choose to change it. And the world will have these beautiful or an amazing events of change into more positive. And if you really stop and take the time, you'll see them every day. You know, it's like that, the story I told of when, when the wildfire in Hawaii it was on the news how terrible it was. The police were overrun, you know, trying to stop people from coming into the, into the area. And when they talked to the police officers, yeah, we, we, we need to ask people to stop coming. And the, and the reporter said, well, what, what do they want? Why are they coming? Are you afraid they're going to loot? He said, well, most of them are carrying food and water and shelter and clothing and all the things people would need, but we just can't let them in here. So the complaint was that a lot of people saw people in need, and showed up with whatever they needed. But what made it on the news? It's so terrible that the people are overrunning the, the, the space. If the police would have let them in, could you imagine, could you imagine how, how many people would have had new clothing and shelter and, and all those things would have changed, you know? It really comes down to we need to stop thinking of borders. We need to start thinking of humanity, you know, they, they fight against the, the drug cartels bringing drugs into the United States. Drugs are going to make it into the United States because drugs are being made in the United States. It's not about, it's not about the drugs or, or any of that. It's the fact that you've created a situation where they've got to break laws and do illegal things to live in humanity safely. Then what happens is the world, you know, the world's going to change. Because people are starting to see people as humans. They're starting to see humanity rather than borders. And the, the people who are so stressed and anxious right now about borders and, and, and you know, religious people coming to our country, you know, what was it, the Muslim bans and all that stuff, those are just the people who are stuck in 2,000-year-old thinking. And the reason they're loud and the reason they're screaming and the reason they're doing all these things is not because they're right. It's because they're stuck in these old way of thinking and they're, and the world's changing. People are seeing people as people. You know, we, I remember when Ronald Reagan, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, a Reagan fan. I don't like his policy, didn't like his policies. But when he said to the United Nations, I can imagine how different it would be if we were all facing an alien threat from outside of our planet, how we'd all bond together. And it's so true. We are humanity. We, are, or we have one border, and it's called the atmosphere. And we need to start treating people that way and loving people that way. You know, <laughs> people say, how, you know, how did, um, how did America originally get populated? They came across the Bering Straits. They came across the Bering Straits. They actually migrated here. They were migrants. The people who populated America were migrants. Today, we wouldn't allow them in. That's really the, the, the situation here. Is we, need to, we need to tear down all borders, in my, in my opinion, because I know when I go to the south in the United States right now, they talk different down there from me. doesn't make them bad people. They just have a different regional dialect, right? Mexicans speak a different language. Okay, why? 
because the Spaniards migrated to Mexico. The Spaniards went to South America. Migration is something that happens all the time, and the world is changing every day because migrants are moving, because the world is changing, and, and everything is getting more and more gathered as one. The Internet has made the world smaller. The Internet and the changes that are coming in the future are not some big, massive, spiritual, energetic shift. It's the natural progression of love. Fear is getting is is losing. Fear is falling away, and love is becoming the the essence of who we are and what we deliver. Um, and so, that being said, um, don't get lost in lazy prophecy. You know, live joyfully in the present, and reach out and accept people from everywhere and all over. Because those are the changes that are happening in the world. And no one knows the day or the time. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, be here today. The mark tomorrow will take care of itself. It's pretty wise. That's my thought on this. You guys have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. See ya.